In this workshop in Sydney, designers are crafting prosthetic limbs for the nation's top Paralympic athletes. Prosthetist David Howes has worked with the Australian Paralympic team for 15 years. This prosthetic leg is made of carbon fibre and smooth, light thermoplastic. It's very important to have the socket fitting well and comfortable for her because you know, in sprinting she's putting four times the body weight through each toe strike, so the socket's got to be comfortable. Can, if we go out, can we just bring that out a little bit? Yeah, I'll just get my own key. The finishing touches are being put on this prosthetic for Paralympic champion Kelly Cartwright. The 22-year-old is a sprinter and long jumper, and this is her first chance to try out her new leg. She's one of just two athletes in the world to be trying a new hydraulic knee joint. The mechanical knee joints we've been using previously has always created, created quite a bit of um, uh, impact at the end of swing phase, which jolts the athlete, which disturbs their, their gait. This is a very smooth knee, so it's really providing the athlete with much more symmetry when they're running, which produces faster times. It's an amazing piece of technology and I think that it's going to be for the f really great for the future and uh, it's just basically a whole different ballpark for, for me to run on it. Technology has come a long way for Paralympians but it sometimes generates controversy. And Oscar Pistorius will have the home straight as he, at his mercy. South African Oscar Pistorius, the blade runner, smashed records at the 2008 Beijing Paralympics. 47-51, he gets his world record as well. But what came next was an ugly fallout. Pistorius is a double below knee amputee who uses two carbon prosthetics and he wanted to race against able-bodied athletes. An international jury ruled his prosthetic limbs had more spring than human legs, although eventually he was allowed to run. The controversy still follows Pistorius wherever he goes, as many question the role of technology in sport. One of the core ethical questions that Oscar Pistorius raises is what we call authenticity. So that is, is what Oscar Pistorius does a result of him the athlete or him the technology, the person interacting with the technology? Kelly Cartwright deeply admires Pistorius, but even she admits his case is a tricky issue for Paralympians too. In my opinion, I find it a bit unfair double baloney is going against a single baloney. I find that really quite um, unfair because obviously he's got two and the other person can only run as fast as their other leg is going to take them. But again, there's also another, other balonies, double balonies that he's against that they're not as fast as him either. So I see, I see him as a really great fast athlete, but also I can see the disadvantage that for the other athletes as well. I think that's quite unfair. Australians are fortunate to be able to afford high-tech equipment. No sport is fair. Inherently it's a process of discrimination. Sport is about finding out who is better than someone else and part of that discrimination is how well people use technology. If Australian Paralympians have access to better technology and can practice with that technology then that's just the foils of war. They are allowed to do that under the rules. So the question of fairness becomes moot. This is about winning medals. Prosthetics like this cost thousands of dollars and are expensive for those even in affluent countries. The Australian Paralympic Committee is hard at work raising money for its athletes travelling to London. It's one of the challenges of the Paralympics how to ensure there's a level playing field when there are vast differences between countries' capacities to fund their athletes. Look, it's always a challenge, but I think the, the distinctions are perhaps not as profound uh, as they were, say, a decade ago. They're still there, but I think it's one of the good things about the Paralympic movement. It's a pretty even playing field and uh, it's something that everyone within the Paralympic movement wants to support as well. The issue plays on the mind of Kelly Cartwright and she feels fortunate. I do think about that a lot. I, uh, I think as well it comes into it is um, yeah, money and also knowledge as well, but they are expensive, obviously, running legs and prosthetic legs. It may not necessarily mean just because they get a leg they can run as well. Kelly Cartwright will compete in long jump against an athlete who will have two carbon feet at this year's London Paralympics. I'm not worried about that at all. I'll just get out there and do what I've got to do and she can't run in her own class because there is no other people so she's got to be with us. So I think it just, it just makes it um, more fun. The London Paralympics begin on the 29th of August. Amy Bainbridge, Late Line.